Tonight is November the 4th, 2019. Primarily, this video I'm going to post tonight is going to be about the uh, AM transmitter. I've decided I'm going to make it for 75 meter AM. I'll uh, have to put up some sort of a kludge of an antenna and with a big antenna tuner to make it happy, but that's what I'm going to do. Uh, <clears throat> I will have I will show you an update on the amplifier that I'm building, and I've changed out the Poseidon board in it, and I'll show you how that one's turned out for a Williamson design. But I wanted to show this one first. Okay. Let's start here. This is the power supply of the modulator. There's a high voltage transformer right there. Nothing's plugged in. It's just sitting here. This is not its final uh, configuration. As crazy as I am, I'm going to use MV rectifiers. I love those mercury vapor rectifiers. I mean, it's, it's kind of insane to use these, these big guys that consume so much power if, when you could replace them with a 10 cent diode that's rated at 6 amps. I think you know what I mean. I don't have to go into detail there. But anyway, this is a uh, 1800 volt 400 milliamp transformer cam from Sandia Labs up in Albuquerque. Same here with this choke. This is a 10 Henry 400 milliamp. They're all part of it. I also have the swinging choke, the 5 to 25 Henry choke that goes with it, but we're not going to use that because we're going to use a voltage doubler. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this transformer right here may not be the final one, but it probably is going to be for the uh, bias voltage. Uh, the power supply capacitors, they're obviously not going to lay down like that because that takes up too much real estate. And here's the beautiful modulator. A pair of 75 THs, and that's the original modulation transformer. This modulation transformer and these two very tubes were came in my original uh, uh, Collins 30K1 cabinet. They've been together for since 1947 or around that time. So they've been together for, you know, 72 years or whatever. So what I'm going to do is, of course, build the power supply of the modulator here. This is that part. And then probably right up here on this rail or right below it in, in, in this space here between the tops of the uh, uh, of these components and the, and the modulator, the tops of these components and the next stage, rather, right up here in... in <clears throat> in this stage, right, in this area right here, let me see if I can get down here. Right around here, I'm going to put a plate, and then I'm just going to put in an audio amplifier, one of the ones that I've built, maybe a Williamson 10W or W10 or whatever you call it, or maybe one of the little uh, uh, 6B4G amps or something like that. All I need is an audio amplifier, and then I've already figured out I'm, I can match it this is a 6v6 push-pull transformer. AK high Z side. I won't call it primary or secondary because the primary is actually going to be the input side which is going to be 4 ohms here. And this is the push-pull side that would normally come off of a pair of 6v6's. That's, going to, that's what's going to drive the grids of these two tubes right here. So this is the driver transformer. I've done this before and it works. Um, like I say, this, this thing, this uh, set of capacitors. They've, each capacitor has got to have an equalizing resistor across it. So there's some detail work that needs to be done there and it's going to be standing up in some other manner so as not to take up so much real estate. But anyway in this area right here will be the audio section. So I'll have the modulator, audio, and power supply from here down. Okay. Now this is a magnificent, excuse me, let me and this squeaky old chair. This is a magnificent old uh, Collins R390. That'll be my AM receiver. So I don't know if it's going to be right there. It probably won't. It'll probably be like in the next stage up here. Uh, this uh, uh, HP signal generator is just in there for convenience because I'm using it right now. And this is the driver. This is called a Collins 310B. It's a 15 watt exciter. It actually is the accompanying exciter that came with this guy right here 70 something years ago. This transmitter originally ran a 4 125 right here and was plate modulated with these very components right there. When I got this 30K1, it was already kind of brutalized. But anyway, 
Um, this will be missing, of course. Uh, I, I don't know exactly the, the last possible configuration of exciter, receiver, amplifier. I'm pretty sure of the uh, audio section and the modulator and power supply down here. Let's see if we can get a, a glimpse at this beauty. I can't put my hand in there right now because it's turned on. It uses plug-in coils. There's a little plug-in coil right there. I think you can see too well. Um, let's look around on the other side. See if we can see anything. That's your interest. It's got some MV, or, or yes, sir, not MV, but uh, VR, voltage regulators. Uh, VR tubes in it. I'm pretty sure I'll use one down in the bottom. Uh, 5V Z4 over here, which I think I've replaced with a 5V4, 5AR4, or 5R4, excuse me, for high voltage. Uh, anyway, that is that, and that is what it is. So, with that said, the AM transmitter is progressing. And pretty soon here, I'll probably get really involved in it and spend 10 hours a day on it for a week and it'll work. At least I hope so. Let's go ahead and take a look at the audio amplifier and, uh, and, and some, of the, um, some of the advancements I've made on it. Okay, for the, uh, my viewers that are just interested in audio equipment, this is the evolution of that amplifier that I used when I put the uh, Poseidon board in. Here's the Poseidon board right here. This is what you last saw in one of the last videos that was in there. I just couldn't get it to perform quite right. So I decided to go to a 2 6SN7s Williamson design because I know for a fact that I've documented at least twice, if not more, that the Williamson design out here with the 2 6SN7s driving some 6L6s, EL34s, it doesn't really matter what you're driving. They perform basically flawlessly from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So I put them in there. All I did is you can see I just cut a, an aluminum uh, strip right here the size of this board that I removed and, uh, and uh, built the driver onto that. I also uh, swapped out back here, you'll, you'll see back there, the uh, 5U4. <clears throat> if you study amplifiers, like a good example is probably the uh, Macintosh MC60. It's a 60 watt amplifier, uses a pair of uh, 6550s. The 6550 and the KT88 is the same thing for all practical purposes. And they use two 5U4s. Well, I never really thought about it a lot, but the thing about it is, is if you're running I don't know exactly where the line in the sand is, but if you're running more than, I'd say, 30 or 40 watts, you need more than one 5U4 because you just can't supply the current. I believe the maximum current for a 5U4 is 250 milliamps. Uh, I, I don't get really wrapped up in, in uh, quoting all these numbers because they're too easy to look up. Anyway, for a pair of uh, 6550s, Macintosh uses two 5U4s so that they can put the plates parallel and uh, get twice the current. Well, when you try, this thing will do over 70 watts, and it's actually quite nice, and it sounds big. It'll drive the nails out of the wall. But when you really start taxing an amplifier like this, of that much power, with one 5U4, it just fizzles out above about 40 watts. I'd say 40 watts is probably the, uh, the line in the sand, so to speak. So anyway, I'm running uh, solid-state rectifiers in it. I love vacuum tube rectifiers. I mean, you can see from already from this video that I want to go to the mercury vapor rectifiers. Of course, they have a very uh, low voltage drop across them. So they're a, they're a different class from the old 5U4 stuff. But uh, diodes, diodes solve that problem. Diodes just simply solve the... Uh, the rectifier problem. Maybe we need to put 5U4s in there and light them up uh, just for their beauty and then <laughs> put diodes in to do the job. And I'm serious. That might be the way to go. 
I'll show you here underneath it right quick. If, uh, if you can see up there, it turned out quite nice. If I try to shine a flashlight up there, it just it just blanks it out. Well, anyway, uh, tonight I just wanted to show the update on the AM transmitter. I promise I will uh, put this guy on uh, on the test bench, on the test equipment, and we'll see how it performs later. Uh, and in another video, this is the one I normally run up there. This thing has gone through lots of evolutions. These are the uh, new Tungsol uh, 6SN7s. They seem to perform just fine, but they, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know, the jury's still out on whether they're actually any better. I'm not sure they're any better. And sometimes I'm not even sure they're as good as those two little guys right there. So, thanks for watching. Always enjoy the comments and the conversations we have. Any uh, constructive Suggestions are very welcome, and we'll see how this turns out in the next uh, week or so. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.